Hello everyone and welcome to a little bit of an unboxing slash review of this, the Jurassic Park San Diego Comic Con exclusive Ray Arnold final scene set. Now, what am I doing with a San Diego Comic Con exclusive, I hear you ask? Well, well, just like last year, Comic Con did not happen. Well, not in full, anyway. So, what Mattel did... Mat is, uh, where's Mattel? Mat Mattel should be on here somewhere. I wanted to point to Mattel. Uh, look, Mattel... You know. Oh, well. Uh, Mattel uh, have graciously, very graciously, offered this item online. They have set up their own uh, website called Mattel Creations. Uh, I think that's one word, dot com. And it basically offers people the chance to get items that uh, they wouldn't have been able to sell at shows like uh, San Diego Comic Con. And it also offers uh, fans to have a say in uh, what gets made next. A little bit like Hasbro Pulse. Essentially, Mattel Creations is their answer to Hasbro Pulse. But the very, very good and handy thing for me is that... Um, Mattel, Mattel Creations uh, offered to ship to the UK as well as mainland America. So, here we are. Now, I will say one thing. This thing, um, I didn't hear about for a long while. Um, I only ever had one piece of communication that this was on its way. <laughs> so, Mattel Creations, if you're watching... Hi. If you're watching, please have a little bit more communication. But I don't know if it was just me. I don't know if it was the fact I didn't actually create an account with Mattel Creations or whatever. But I feel like when when your item is being shipped from actual America, um, you, you'd expect a little bit of tracking information. You know, I mean, I, I, can, I can understand that... Uh, doing it might cost a bit and all that, but, but sometimes it's worth it, you know? You, you, you know, sometimes people like to keep an eye on what's happening with the items that they have bought that are across an entire ocean. So, yeah, the only email I got after, congratulations, you've bought the thing, is the thing has been sent, and that was months later down the line. <laughs> And I was very tempted to uh, contact them and say, yo, what's up? Where's this? Where's my thing? <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's here now. So what happens to Ray Arnold in his final scene? After shutting down Jurassic Park's power system, he lends a hand, I get it, to help, dow help turn on the circuit breakers. But he's seen again. At least not entirely. <laughs> what does that mean? Y'all know what that means. You've seen the movie. But, you know, communication, shipping problems aside, um, this is clearly a masterclass in product presentation. Because look at this thing. Because you got the sh you got the bunker there, you got the outside of the bunker, surrounded in this packaging that makes it look like it's fenced off. How cool is that? You know, and if it wasn't for this... Jurassic Park logo here itself, ironically, then that could be used as a backdrop for something, you know? Anyway, let's crack this thing open. Pre-warning, like I've done with other toys, I have already opened it, so I've already tried to um, get as much as possible out of uh, getting the thing as streamlined as possible. However, you know, removing all the bump packaging, but there's only so much you can do. So in this, this uh, sh this uh, outer box, it does an Emperor's New Groove because within that box you've got another box and it's the bunker itself again, Jurassic Park logo. But look, check it out, it's it's shaped as well. It's a deltoid shape, very nice, very attractive. And it's, well, for a concrete bunker, I suppose. So yeah, you've got, you've got this uh, nice, it's a very nice, smooth feeling plastic, uh, plastic cardboard as well. It's you know, it's a, you know, put some care into this. This is this is this is this is premium stuff. 
this this concrete this is premium cardboard concrete <laughs> Oh, I've, I hit the wrecks in there. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, you're, you're okay. No, the aerosol's falling. No, be be there in the background. Just you know, <laughs> look, be there and look pretty. I will. All right, here we go. So that's the uh, inner box, and this whole front is a flap. Hold on to your butt. Hey, it did the line. I was hoping it would do the line. On that thing, because I've opened this a few times and and I can't tell if these series of lights and things are randomised or if they're in sequence. But uh, yeah, you have this magnet here holding up the uh, front flap of the box, and it's this button here that it releases. Theoretically, yes, but we've never shut down the entire system before. It may not come back on at all. And as you can see, Mr. Ray Arnold himself and a Velociraptor. This is supposed to represent the Velociraptor that is hiding in the bunker when Ellie uh, comes along and finds uh, what's left of him um, to turn to restore power. However, oh, I just, no, 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 that's crazy. You're out of your mind. He's absolutely out of his mind. You're damn right, Ray Arnold. Because the, the, this Velociraptor ha is a very stripy Velociraptor. See, I've already undone the uh, tigs and things, uh, the the uh, straps and whatever. Because whilst it is a very nice looking Velociraptor, straight away it has stripes. Now, two things. First of all, the striped raptor tends to be more of a thing for the Lost World. And I've got two raptors here that I consider to, that uh, Mattel have done. And I consider to be Lost World Raptors. I know that's not so much stripy, but it was, uh, suppose, but it was in the Legacy Collection. It was supposed to emulate the uh, stripy Raptors. But this, in particular, this recent model, this recent paint job there. Look, look at that. That's a that's a stripy Lost World Raptor. If ever I saw one. So we've got those two, and 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 there you go. This this is another stripy Raptor. Now, obviously, stripes are a bit different. It's got green eyes, like they do in the original movie as well. But, yeah, very stripy. Now, the thing is, the Velociraptors, as I remember, when they were being developed, when the movie was being made, they, they, they did intend the Raptors to have stripes. And like a lot of things that they did in Stan Winston Studio, they nullified it a bit. They, they sort of toned it down a lot. So... Like like the Tyrannosaurus in the movie has stripes, but they are very, very faint. You know, it's almost as if you can't see them. So, yeah. So, yeah. See, the closest thing I have at the moment to a Jurassic Park Velociraptor is this guy. Yeah, completely orange. <laughs> it's basically one colour. I mean, can you call that shading a colour? I don't know, I don't know. Yellow eyes as well. Yeah. This was supposed to emulate the uh, Kenner uh, Velociraptor, which I still have an example of uh, in the lo in the loft somewhere, in the attic somewhere. But yeah, that's that's the closest thing I've got to a Jurassic Park Velociraptor at the moment. But uh, now I have this. And, I, and a good friend of mine, Christine, uh, who lives in America, she actually picked up the um, Legacy Pack with... Ellie and John Hammond and the two raptors in that set. The two raptors in that set look a lot more like uh, what they do in the movie than than this one. So when I have that one, eventually, then I will do a stream unboxing thing of that as well. It'll be it'll be so late down the line that it won't really matter to anyone except me. But uh, <laughs> but I'll do that nonetheless. Also, painted toes. Now this is a special edition of Deluxe Velociraptor set so I, I would have liked painted fingernails as well but you can't have everything and and again this is the prowly stocky mold that we've seen a few times thank you that we've seen a few times as well um here's echo in that same mold so the mold itself nothing new the paint job however very very nice yes open the mouth open that yeah let's have a look Ah, stiff joint because it hardly been opened. 
There we go. Nice set of teeth, very clean. Very crisp. And nice colour in the mouth as well. Again, I must apologise for the poor lighting. <laughs> but there you go. Boop. Okay. Let's look at the star himself. Now, I don't want to pull him by the wrong thing. <laughs> do -do -do -do. Mr. Samuel L. Jackson. And it's quite amusing. See, this is why I like to take as much plastic out as possible. Because it's noisy. <laughs> now, what's quite amusing is that... Uh, see, always recycle. There you go. See, what's amusing to me is that um, it was only like five years after... I saw Jurassic Park that I realised that Samuel L. Jackson was in Jurassic Park. Uh, hi, John, Tommy, I want dinosaurs. Well, yeah, don't we all? Don't we all? Thank you very much for joining in. So there we go, Samuel L. Jackson, Ray Arnold. You can already start to see a bit of what's to come. Uh, very nice undressed representation of him. I've no idea if we're going to get a regular... Uh, Ray Arnold figure of, or, you know, Ray, Ray, a regular version of this Ray Arnold figure because this definitely looks like a version of the figure you'd have in an exclusive set like this. But uh, if there was a version of him that was more like his um, Amber Collection version, so he had the full outfit and what have you, then I suppose they'd do that. It's going to See if we can get as close a look as possible at his face. Now, <laughs> his glasses do look a bit like bottle bases. Yeah. But otherwise, not too bad. The, the face sculpt uh, does look enough like Samuel L. Jackson to say, oh, that looks like Samuel L. Jackson. I believe so anyway. Um, the problem is it's hidden... Half of it is hidden by those, by those glasses. Um, yeah, the it's always an issue with uh, trying to scale down something like glasses. Is uh, yeah, it, sometimes it doesn't really work that well. But take a look at the detail on that detail on his tie, detail on the belt, the stripes on his shirt as well. Very nice, very clean. Uh, it's got the standard articulation you would expect from. Uh, this kind of uh, figure, universal joints all around. Well, in the main joints anyway. So you can do a bit of a, you can do a bit of Captain Morgan. Yeah, drink responsibly. And yeah, but the highlight of this figure that no other figure can do is that his arm can pop off. <laughs> because 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 this is the last thing you see of him, Mr. Arnold. Ah, oh, Mr. Arnold. <gasps> you know? You know the scene. Y'all know what I mean. <laughs> but yeah, when you can pop it on, take, keep it off. There you go. So the only thing is you've got the break in the uh, shirt. So as good as that feature is, and I've seen this kind of feature on other kinds of figures as well. Uh, I know Necker have done that kind of thing too. You know, like, a, like if uh, the Predator 2... Uh, Predator has his arm cut off, you know, they'll have that kind of uh, feature for that sort of figure. And I suppose for larger scale figures, that effect is better hidden when you put the arm back on. But of course, at this scale, they, they do the best. And I think they've done really well. It just looks like he's got something under his shirt, which is a very nice effect, actually. It just looks like, um, yeah, it just looks like he's cut himself and it's like... And 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 he'll look down and think, oh no, oh no, I'm gonna be a zombie. You know, something something like that. <laughs> so that's rare. Now let's have a look at this box, shall we? This voice box. Take it off in the thing. Now, of course, because this sticks out, you have to depress that to sort of. Three minutes, I can have power back on the entire park. Yes, you can. It's kind of funny without the figures in there. <laughs> so, yeah, selection of voice lines, and we'll play them more once we try and... Quite rather awkward. Whatever it did, it did it all. 
broke the key checks off, the computer didn't find the keystroke, so the only way to find them now is to go through the computer's last code one by one. There we go. So we got we got a box within the box within the box. Always good. And this is not even the final step. Because of course you can remove this. Hold on to your butt. The only thing is, in trying to do it earlier, I kind of broke this. <laughs> but the thing is, it's mine anyway, and it's not like I'm going to resell it any time yeah, in the near future. There we go. So we've got the core um, device, shall we say, for the for the thing, and it's got a foot peg on it as well, which means you can plant. Uh, re let's see, foot peg. Da -da -da. There you go. You can put Ray Arnold on the thing, and it's it's like the brilliant thing about this scene, about this about this little collection is it's almost like what you didn't see in the film. So. Is a very nice idea. I think it's a, it's definitely, to me, it's a definitely, definitely a nicer idea than the, um, Nedry Barbasol can that was done for twenty twenty. Um, not that that wasn't cool, but it is Nedry, and yeah, I'm I'm not really up on the. Uh, focus for Nedry when it, especially if characters like Lex and Ellie keep getting overlooked, you know? We're still waiting for the Ellie figure, Mattel, thank you. Uh, so yeah, let, let's just let's just play around with the box box. No, 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 that's crazy. You're out of your mind. He's absolutely out of his mind. <laughs> Intersplicing lines that Ray Arnold has with a nice Velociraptor sound. Yes, yeah, lovely. Theoretically, yes, but we've never shut down the entire system before. It may not come back on at all. <laughs> okay. Three minutes, I can have power back on the entire park. Hooray! Ah. <laughs> White uh. <laughs> rabbit object. Whatever it did, it did it all. But with the key checks off, the computer didn't find the keystroke, so the only way to find it now is to go through the computer's lines of code one by one. Um, how many lines of codes are there? About three million. <laughs> Doesn't have that line in it. Hold on to your butts. And we end on the classic one. Brr. Anyway. So yeah. Nice little stand. And if we just, 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 just move out of the way. Uh, and <laughs> I am just I'm just gonna just gonna do that. So just 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 do that. Just, just do that. Um if we have a look at the actual panel as well. Uh, yeah, very nicely detailed, and I'm not sure if... One second. Yes! Uh, I must have seen it already, but uh, on... See, most of these are just, like, stickers, like, tampers, decals, but... Yeah. Reach around. Oh, God. But they do actually have each of the uh, f each of the fence descriptions on them, including right at the bottom, the perimeter fence, which is the one that ends up shocking old Timmy, the human piece of dust, and and I cannot remember which button it is. I think it's that green one there. That's the one that is pushed to close. So we've got uh, danger, high voltage, and the Spanish equivalent as well, peligro. Alto Voltaire, I believe that's pronounced. Sorry if uh, any Spanish speakers are watching, and that but pronunciation has been butchered. Butchered, shall we say? But yeah, not bad, is it? You can tell that most of the uh, work has gone into this and that, <laughs> uh, not a lot else in the thing. But yeah, but then again, half of it was in the dark. Dark anyway. This is most of what we remember, so. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too fussed about that. If this was at a larger scale, like the like for the Amber Collection, I can imagine that um, there'd be a little bit more like the actual covering that covers this thing. You can swing it open and then start pushing buttons, and there might be an LED illuminating the back of this as well. Yeah. Yeah. But 
all in all, all in not see nothing much in the back as well. A little bit hollow, a uh, kind of immersion breaking, I have to say. <laughs> but yeah, a very nice addition to the Jurassic Park collection. Put Ray now, put Ray back on there, and 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 then and then have the raptor. You know, just just biting at his arm. Just, just, just there you go. Do the thing. There, there you go. Do the thing. <laughs> so, and then and then have Ray just look at the raptor like, yeah, yeah, and then and then just have Ray look at the raptor like, excuse me, I'm just I'm trying to do something here. Can you not? <laughs> All right, there we go. So, that was a quick look, well, a quick look for me anyway, at the Jurassic Park Ray Arnold final scene uh, pack, uh, which would have been exclusive to San Diego Comic Con, and... Hey, just Mike 89 quick! Quick! Well, I'm at the 23-minute mark. So, for me, that is quick. <laughs> yeah, I hope you're doing okay, Mike. So, yeah, uh, this, has been, this has been a fairly quick look at uh, this set. And, yeah, hopefully we'll be streaming later tonight. Uh, should be doing some more Jurassic stuff. As well as can be, hope you, hope you are too. Hey, not bad at all. Thank you. Good to hear you're doing well as well. Uh, yep, later tonight we'll be we will be doing some more Jurassic content. Um, did I say that unironically? Ugh, content, I know. Uh, yeah, we're doing some Lego Jurassic Worlding. Uh, something I've wanted to do for a while uh, because uh, we've been waiting for season four of Camp Cretaceous, and which will be at the end of the week. Uh, I've put it, I've been putting out some more reviews and stuff. On my socials, so uh, if you go on my Twitters and whatever, you, you'll uh, see some more. Um, you'll see some uh, Dimorphodon, some Stegosaur uh, action, and what have you. So yeah, thank you very much for joining everyone. Uh, thank you very much for having a look, checking this out, and uh, yeah, she'll hopefully see you later. Three minutes, I can have power back on the entire park. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> All right, everyone, be awesome to each other and yourself and always wash your dang hands and stuff. Bye.